הלל פוסק, עורך ערוץ הרכב שלנו פה עם הפרטים המטלטלים והמקרינים האלה. ובכן, הנמות... לא מזיהום, אלא מקרינה, מה נהיה? זו שאלה. אנחנו לפני מספר ימים עוררנו כאן בוויינט את הסיפור שמטריד אנשים, יש לומר, כבר שנים ארוכות. נעשו בדיקות, היו פרסומים, אף אחד לא באמת ידע לומר האם כלי רכב עם סוללה מאוד גדולה מתחת למושבים האחוריים עשויים להוות סכנה עבור תינוקות שיושבים שם בכיסא בטיחות למשל. המכונית הנמכרת ביותר בישראל היא מכונית היברידית השנה. של... אתה מודע לך... יונדאי איוניק. אה, אוקיי. עכשיו. ה... חצ... חכה שנייה, כי מאותתים לי שיש לנו אורח. באמת? כן. אתה לא יודע מי פה. איך הגיע? סקוט מקורמיק נמצא כאן, והוא מבחינתי תעשיית הרכב האמריקאית, והוא נמצא איתנו בשידור חי. הלו, מיסטר מקורמיק. הלו, איך אתה? They are dangerous? <laughs> we haven't done enough research to know how dangerous we are, they are. Some people say the cars can generate a thousand milligauss of electricity in, 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 in a, an extremely low frequency. The medical environment thinks that extremely low frequency in high doses might cause cancer, but there's no proof of that. So we need to do a lot more research on what levels of extremely low frequency there are, and then at the same time, what kind of shielding we should be putting on these batteries and the other electronic communication systems in the car. So uh, the problem is uh, uh, that you have cars that have the battery behind, right, in the back. Yes, yeah, some of them are in the back, but the majority of them have a, have a platform that, the, that all the batteries sit on at the, at the, at the center of the car, across from, the, from the, the behind the front wheels to in front of the back wheels. And it's, mm -hmm. it's like a deck. It's like a skateboard. Americans okay. are in love with their hybrids? Yes, the, the Americans are, are liking the hybrids. The problem is, is that they're a bit more expensive. And because in the United States, a lot of people take long drives, longer than... Than, than 500 kilometers, they're looking for range. And so hybrids are much more a viable option for them than our electric vehicles, because electric vehicles, after 200 miles, you have to stop and charge, versus a hybrid can keep going under the, under the engine power feeding the generator. Do you think that when, when we have this research that is, that is uh, bringing out all the dangers that these cars are representing to us, This will uh, maybe not destroy the industry, but change the industry, or maybe uh, hold it back for a while? Well, I think you have to take the analogy of, of looking at the uh, cell phone industry. When the cell phone industry first started producing their phones, there was big concerns about radiation. And so the phone manufacturers worked on how do they shield that radiation. And then when Bluetooth headsets came about, There was concern about, well, okay, is that generating any radiation? And so the industry looked at all the research and did their own studies and found a way to shield it. So I don't think anything is a deal killer. I think as we discover what extremely low frequency radiation is being put out, and as we understand what level of tolerance human beings can have, then we'll figure out how to shield that so that it's safe. And Mr. McCormick. Would you like to comment on the schedule for the autonomous cars being uh, produced and then uh, on the road, on the public road? Is it still uh, 2021, as some manufacturers uh, told us? Well, there's publicity that, that people put out there, and then there's the reality of it. Um, the reality of it is that In order for it to be fully autonomous, the car would have to operate under all road weather and traffic conditions. So we don't expect that it'll be able to, to see through the night or in rain or snow until 2024 or 2025. You also have to have, besides having cameras and radar, you have to have LiDAR. And those systems are not perfected yet either. I am probably the strongest proponent of saying, let's stop testing these on roads and test them on the test beds that we built. We know that it's such an unpredictable environment that even an autonomous car will always cause a death at some point. 
but our hope is that it'll only cause one-tenth the number of deaths that people do. So I would believe less in the press that's going on and more in the reality that was in it. Um, I was just in China as a judge for a 91 vehicle autonomous vehicle challenge and not a single vehicle was able to handle all the requirements. All right. And they were very simple tests. All right, Mr. McCormick, thank you so much for talking with us.